I was taking agents from zero to six figures, like multiple times. Like I think the other day I went back and I think I was able to take about 10 to 15 agents from scratch, from zero to hundred K. And it took several from hundred K even at three or $400,000 a year. And every single time that I did this, there was this framework where it was based on three philosophies. And if you implement them, anyone can get to six figures and they're pretty simple. This is stay paid. The marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration and discover proven real world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri. Before we bring on our guest today, we'd love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcast. If you're not already or Spotify, while you're there, drop us a review. We would love to read it here on the show. Our guest today is returning for, I think, the first time in three years, we said. Yeah, before it's we been a long time. Juan Carlos Baranecci. Juan is the founder of Gold Bar, a digital education platform designed to provide real estate agents with training and systems to scale their business faster. Before the age of 30, Juan Carlos has managed to sell more than $250 million worth of real estate and recruit more than 1,000 agents to his brokerage, as well as being featured on major real estate publications, including Inman News, and being interviewed on CBS news. Juan, welcome back to Stay Paid. Thanks for returning. Thank you so much, guys. I'm happy to be here. Hey, man, it is awesome to have you back. So Juan was somebody best that Best background, I, I think, maybe. Yeah, that the, definitely Go one check of the out best. the video. Stay I, paid I, I was going to say, I love your background. I almost went with the exact same wooden like panel, <laughs> but like I had to make it to some, I some love the sign, the gold bar sign. Second, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to go watch the video. But I've been speaking of like, uh, you know, content, all that stuff. I've been following your content. So I follow most of the people that come on Stay Paid and continue to follow them, keep up with them. But you're one that I have really just uh, honed in on because you are crushing it, brother. Like I've been watching mm-hmm. your journey. You're speaking all over the country. You have a training platform rolling out. Uh, you have 1,200 agents in your downline. I mean, just super successful. And so, and all the, how old are you now? Uh, 29. 29. Yeah, all 29, dude. Like, I'm 34. What have I been doing? Yeah, I, I, feel, <laughs> I always feel good about myself. And then I meet people like Juan, and I'm like, yeah, okay. All right, we, but, we got but, more hey, to do. Hey, for, for, for full transparency, I do turn 30 in two months, so I can no longer milk the whole 20s thing. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you are, you are killing it, man. I want to pick your brain. You put out a post on Instagram that basically said you have this three-step kind of thought process or framework to help agents get to $100,000. And you made kind of the joke that said, you really have a five-step thought process around getting to a million uh, dollars, but that was too much for people to handle. So you're just going to help people, or someone told you that's too much for people to handle. So give them just the three-step for 100,000. Tell me what your thought process is there. You have this training platform that you've done how can agents today in this market get to $100,000? So from 2016 to 2018, I basically went out there and I did anything you possibly could to become a successful residential agent. I door knocked, I cold called, email marketing, social media. I ran the funnels, I did the ads, I did whatever I could. My first year in real estate, I sold one house. So it turns out, even if you go ahead and you put all the sweat equity into this business, you could still fall flat on your face and fail. My second year, I hired a coach, And that coach told me, Juan, you're doing the right activity. You're just doing it not consistently enough and you don't have any systems behind it. When I started making it more of a consistent action and I put some systems to actually record KPIs, track metrics and do it in a way where it was actually more like a business, that second year, it just completely blew up. Um, I then started a team from 2018 to 2020. And what I realized in the process of starting a team was I was taking agents from zero to six figures, like multiple times. Like I think the other day I went back and I think I was able to take about 10 to 15 agents from scratch, from zero to hundred K. And it took several from hundred K even at three or $400,000 a year. And every single time that I did this, there was this framework where it was based on three philosophies. And if you implement them, anyone can get to six figures and they're pretty simple. Step one is the lead generation process. During the lead generation process, most agents can't even identify what a lead is. And this is where they get completely stuck. They don't have no idea what to do. A lead is defined as someone you have yet to build a relationship with. And once you get that relationship in place and you get their name, phone number, and email, well, now you actually have a lead. It's just they don't see it as a lead because that person may not be ready to buy or sell. So what I understood is if you could go out there and start building as many relationships as possible and ask them the simple question, hey, do you have a realtor? Most people are going to say no. Mm. And when they say no, all you have to do is follow up and say, can I be a realtor in the future if you ever needed one? When you get their contact information, the only thing you have to do now is wait for life to happen. They're going to get married. They're going to have a kid. That kid's going to grow up and go to college. They're going to want to downsize. They may get divorced. They may have a death in the family. They may lose their job. Life is automatically going to happen to them. And when life happens, their motivation will increase. 
Mm. At this point, your only goal is to do step two, nurture them correctly, stay in the game long enough so they remember you. And then once you nurture them correctly, step three comes along, you're gonna get a referral and all you have to do is lead convert. So it's lead gen, lead nurture, lead convert. That's the three-step philosophy to get to 100K. Yeah, that did. That is the summary of the business right there. That is truly what it is. So to, let's dive a little deeper, right? So lead gen is about building relationships. When you are coaching agents, you know, I like Tom Ferry's philosophy, which is like, there's no wrong way to generate leads, right? It's really, it's what are you going to work? But which ones do you prefer? Where do you see the success? Is it paid advertising? Is it networking events, cold calling? Like, wh where do you see the success for your lead gen and stuff? I'd have to agree with him in the sense that I think everything works. So here's what it came down to. It wasn't about what works and what doesn't. It's about understanding that there's different types of lead generation. So prospecting based lead generation, like door knocking, cold calling, networking, going to conferences and meeting people in person, that's a form of outbound lead generation. When you're doing an outbound form of lead generation, you're basically trading your time for money. And most people can't go out there and run a billboard or run an ad or a radio advertisement because they don't have money. Mm. When they have money, now they could get into more inbound lead generation where the lead calls you. Once you go ahead and start investing into inbound lead generation, like marketing, paid ads, Facebook funnels, things on that end, you, now you're trading your money to make more money for you. So um, I don't think it's about what's the perfect strategy. I, I could go ahead and agree that as long as they're doing something, they're consistent with it and they're adding five to 10 people to our database daily. The only magic is in the nurturing process because most people you speak to are not gonna be ready to buy or sell. And if you can just change your philosophy about trying to find the person that's ready to buy or now and just try to build as many relationships as possible and nurture them correctly, what you have is a referral-based machine at the end of the night. So let's talk about the nurturing, but before we get there, I wanna point out a golden nugget. You said adding five relationships a day or five to 10. Is that where yes. you tend to try to push your team or when, you're, when you were coaching agents, basically going, hey, five to 10 a day is your goal? I make that the actual like minimum standard we go for because five a day working five days a week is 25 a week, okay. 25 a week, four times a, a month is going to be a hundred a month. And that ends up being 1200 a year. If you multiply that number times 1%, you get about 12 referrals and at 12 okay. referrals, you're converting about 10 of them. So if your goal is to close 10 deals a year or more, at an average of $10,000 in commission, five people a day is the formula to get to that 100K. Okay, awesome. And then a myriad of different ways you can add it. Heck, you could talk to somebody in the grocery store, right? And add them to your database. Literally anyone. And that's the whole thing about being an agent. I think people overcomplicate the process and they're like, I need a specific Facebook ad or I have to call up a specific for sell my owner strategy. You could literally go up to a random person at Starbucks, build a relationship with them. And then that relationship could turn into a referral three weeks later. Yeah. Uh, so for <clears throat> just so I understand when you're saying you, the inbound leads you're getting the type of relationships that you're building, you're not trying to drive them to a decision. You're just simply saying, uh, do you have a realtor? No, I do not. Can I be your realtor in the future? Yes, you can. And then you're effectively nurtured. That's a little different than what we've seen and what we've been testing as well versus trying to get, you know, to the appointment, to the, to the, you know, the deal or, or the decision making process. I call it relationship-based marketing. It seems that a lot of people are pushing conversion, uh, dealing with objections, uh, mastering scripts, which are all good actual techniques if the person is actually motivated at that point. But here's the thing, there's a blue ocean and there's a red ocean. The red ocean is where the 1% of agents are hanging out trying to go after the same fish. The issue is no one actually knows when someone's ready to buy or sell. You may have a for sale by owner waving his hand saying, hey, I want to sell my house. Mm -hmm. But when you speak to them, they're $200,000 above market value. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they're actually not motivated at all. Same with the Zillow leads or the online leads. They all say that they're ready to buy or sell. But when you speak to them, why do they have a 1% conversion ratio? Mm -hmm. Then you have the blue ocean where the 99% of fish hang out that have no interest in buying or selling. If you just go knock on 100 doors and you speak to 100 people, you're going to find that the 1% is hiding within the 99%. So my whole thing was, okay, let me go out there and build relationships with every single person and their mother. Let me nurture them up until the point where they become the 1%. And now what ends up happening is instead of them becoming a FISBO, instead of them going out there and looking on realtor.com, they're going to call me. And now I just go ahead and disrupt the entire process from start to finish. Well, there's a fundamental, I love that. There's a fundamental belief there that basically means when that person gets to the point, the 1%, when they enter into 1% where they're actually looking to buy or sell, the reason they'll pick their agent is the person who spent time with them in the blue ocean. Like that's the fundamental belief is that the person who actually cared about them, had a relationship with them in the blue ocean 
actually gets the deal in the red ocean, which is a different philosophy, which is the relationship philosophy, which means you can't really go into it going for, hey, convert, convert, convert. You got to go in for it like, mm -hmm. hey, we're, you know, I care about you. We're friends. Can I be your real estate agent? And, and then that gets to the nurturing. Talk about how you nurture. Like mm -hmm. what, what's your thought process there to keep how many times you get in front of people? What type of things are you doing to get in front of them? So what we do with the Gold Bar Nurturing System is it's two different ways to nurture. You can nurture them digitally or you can nurture them physically. Uh, when I say nurturing digitally, I'm talking about email campaigns, text blast campaigns, voicemail blasts, things that could be automated at mass. If you can't automate it, then it's going to be very hard for you to follow up manually with a thousand people. So when it comes to the email campaigns, you want to make sure that the emails aren't generic. You're not sending them cooking recipes or just things to do on the holidays. You're actually things, uh, you're sending them things that are of value to them. Um, how to get a discount on, on your mortgage rate, how to go ahead and save when it comes to buying investment properties, how to build wealth, investing in cash flow using the Burr method, things that actually they could use in their day-to-day -day life that would add value to them when they are ready to buy or sell. When it comes to our text campaigns, it's all about just staying in touch, wishing them a happy holiday, that's it. The same way your cousin would say, hey, happy Thanksgiving or happy 4th of July, you wanna stay in touch in a way where you're just staying top of mind. Yep. And then the voicemail blast is a way for you to remind them that you're still in the business. So when you combine all of that, we're using anywhere between 16 touches to 18 touches a year. It's fully automated. We built out an entire CRM that does the entire thing for you. And now your only end goal is fill up the CRM, fuel it up, and now the CRM goes out there and nurtures them for you. Now, do you add in any um, like face-to-face -face or client events or actual physical phone calls to your touch? Do you encourage that? So now we have the physical nurturing. I tried to do the whole client appreciation. I think it's a very good ROI, but it's not something that's easily scaled amongst agents because it yep. requires tons of event planning skills, a budget. You may have to raise capital to go out there and do that. So whenever there's so much uh, of a barrier to go out there and do an event, it ends up usually not happening. So what we prefer to do is to take a small budget for anyone that sends us a referral and we call it the VIP list. And anyone that sends us a referral or actually closes on the house now gets an actual gift on their birthday their six month birthday or their half birthday and the anniversary on when they actually closed on the house or sent us the referral. And now they're getting three physical items in the mail every single year on top of the digital campaign also. And that just boosts up conversion on a whole nother level. Yeah, love that. And that's added, is the, so make sure I understand count wise, you're 16 to 18. Is that including, including the physical or just the digital? And then including just the physical, you're up to 20 plus. Really good question. When you do all of the digital, you're doing that to the masses. You're doing that yep. to everyone and anyone in your database. The physical is only re uh, recommended for people that actually went ahead and sent you a referral a -list. or became a client gotcha. themselves, correct. Okay, that makes sense. That's very similar to what we've seen over the past two decades is like your VIP list, your A list, however you refer to yeah. it, those ones get the physical, the invite them to a client event if you do that. Yeah. It's funny correct. you say that about the client events because Josh and I have been talking going, how do we help agents scale, scale <laughs> client events? Because they're- like Take all that off the It plate, is yeah. just so obvious to us interviewing 450 episodes in it's that client huge. events is in an insane ROI, but impossible to pull off. Like it's like so interesting that the ones who do it get insane ROI, but everybody faces what you're saying, which is like, Oh, it's very hard to scale. Then you have to be an event planner. And so Josh and I've been thinking like, man, how do we, how could we actually help agents do this? All right. So let's talk about the last one, which is the conversion, right? So you're, you've generated them, you nurtured them. You're, you're now looking to convert. Yeah. What is that thought process to you? The entire conversion comes down to you qualifying them correctly. Uh, and then once you qualify them, actually knowing that you have a presentation in place to convert them into a client. So the conversion process starts with you send them a booking link and a booking link could be used through a, uh, a CRM that we use. Uh, we could also use Calendly, we could use Acuity. Whenever you send a booking link, you actually have the opportunity to qualify them ahead of time. So I go ahead and send people this booking link and they'll tell us uh, if they're pre-approved or not, how long they've been in the market to buy and sell, um, what their goals are, where they see themselves in five years. We can really qualify them before we actually meet with them. This is really good because if for whatever reason they have like really bad credit or they don't really actually qualify for a mortgage, we can now connect them with a third party mortgage lender to work on that versus taking the actual meeting. Okay. Once we go ahead and we actually book them to these actual booking softwares, it's interesting, the booking software follows up for you. So you don't even have to do the follow-up, the text, the email reminder, all of that stuff. The software is just literally staying in touch like a personal assistant. Once you actually do the meeting, it's all about setting up the presentation so that you have as much credibility as possible. We send them an actual pre-listing package or a resume with our information. This goes ahead and has 
all of the details we'd be discussing in the meeting itself, the marketing strategy, what makes us different from everyone else, our credibility when it comes to our track record and how it's sold, our brokerage information, literally things that they would go ahead and ask us in the meeting, we go ahead and give it to them beforehand. And now they could actually take the time to sit down, review it, everything on that end. The day of the meeting, which we prefer to do on actual Zoom instead of doing it in person, it's just way more cost efficient, we now go ahead and do an entire presentation. So we literally mapped out an entire PowerPoint where we know the objects that are gonna come up. What's your commission? What makes you different than everyone else? And will you price the house at the actual price that I wanna list it at? And when you can handle these three actual uh, objections within the presentation, before they bring it up, it's almost like they're gonna be like, wow, this person can read, read my mind. They were so professional. They were following up with me. They were actually staying in touch with me throughout this entire year. Like when you connect the entire system, like there is no objection. There's just so much trust credibility and likelihood that they want to work with you that at that point it's getting the listing signs. Yeah. It's so good. <clears throat> Step back real quick because I, maybe I missed it, but the conversion itself, when does that happen? Does that happen out of your nurture stream? Like you're consistently hitting them with a call to action that encourages the conversion. Or are you saying the conversion happens when those people that you're nurturing refer you out and then you naturally, you know, talk to that person and get them hooked up with the booking system. So why don't we just go ahead and take it like from start all the way to finish on the entire transaction. I think it'd be pretty cool. What do you guys think? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and say like, Josh, what's your favorite coffee shop? For example, Starbucks. Okay, cool. I'm going to meet you uh, at the Starbucks on main street. Okay. And you're standing right next to me in line. And I come up to you. I'm like, Hey, what are you drinking there? And you're telling me, Oh, I'm drinking a nice ice matcha tea latte. And I say, okay, cool. Is that good? Like I've never got it here. And you're like, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I end up buying one. I'm like, Hey, thanks so much for the recommendation. By the way, I didn't get your name. You say, my name is Josh. I'm like, Hey Josh, my name is from Carlos. Uh, I'm just curious. Do you happen to have a realtor? And then Josh, you probably say no, because yep. no one needs a realtor until they actually need one. So you say, okay, cool. Well, I'm a realtor. I'd love to help you in the future. If you need anything, you mind if I collect your contact information? You say, sure. sure. Take out my phone. You got to get your name, phone number, email, three things. Okay. And I'll stay, take that information. I put that into my CRM, which already has the template, the workflow and the automation turned on. I don't do anything else. And now you start hearing from me 30 days later in the form of an email. You start hearing from me on the holidays. And then every six months you get this voicemail just reminding you that I could help you out any way you want. You start seeing me everywhere. I now have your information on email so I could actually get your Instagram. I could follow you on there. And all of a sudden it's almost like, wow, I'm seeing this person everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. We can take it a step further. We can start doing retargeting ads if you really want to get in front of them. And now what you've done is you started building real estate in their mind. Mm -hmm. After let's say two or three months, your cousin needs to sell their house. You remember, hey, I do know a realtor. I ran into that person in Starbucks. They've been staying in touch with me. I see them on Instagram. I'm going to refer them. So you go ahead, you call me up and you say, hey, Juan, um, I referral for you. Uh, we met at Starbucks. I'm like, yeah, hey, what's going on, Josh? I remember you. You go ahead, you give me the referral. And I'm like, hey, listen, do me a quick favor. Can you introduce us in the form of a three-way text? The reason a three-way text is so powerful is because if I go ahead and collect the information right now, it's going to be literally like me chasing them down, trying to book an appointment, whatever. But if it's a three-way text, there's going to be a lot more pressure for that person to take the meeting with me because it's a sign of respect for you introducing the referral. Mm -hmm. So they set up a three-way text. You say, hey, uh, Juan, this is my uh, my cousin, uh, Chris. He's looking to buy a house uh, or sell a house. Can you go ahead and help him out? I say, listen, Josh, thank you so much for the referral. Chris, I'm going to go ahead and send you my booking link. Feel free to pick any time that works best for you. The magic with this line is you are literally making it convenient for them to use the booking link, even though it's making your life easier. And you know the booking link is going to follow up with them. They make a meeting out for next Sunday. It's following up with them via text, email, and voice until next Sunday. They end up confirming for the meeting. As soon as they go ahead and confirm, my resume automatically goes out to them. Once they read my entire resume, we actually get together on Sunday. And then on Sunday, we get together for a Zoom just like this, where I literally just press a button, going through the entire presentation, letting them know, this is why we're going to be selling your house. This is why I'm the best fit. This is why we're going to price your property competitively. This is the entire objection hunting for my commission. And these are the next steps to get started. By the time the entire process goes, the only question he has left is what are the next steps? And then once they say that, I say, sign the paperwork. So that's the entire <laughs> thing. And here's the crazy part. A fourth grader could do this. Literally all I did <laughs> was take a relationship from cold yeah, so at great. Starbucks to warming it up consistently and then closing it. And if you do that for thousands of people, get out of here. If you do it for thousands of people, get out of here. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like, because uh, I agree totally. It's like the fundamentals are what's missing in, in real estate because people see their business as a hobby and not a business, and they don't implement the systems of follow up. There's also a big problem of perfect instead of done. 
So everybody's looking for the perfect emails to send, the perfect drips, instead of actually just implementing something and knowing that it's actually the consistency that actually gets it more than even the content um, a lot of times. And so it's like those pain points are what kill real estate agents, which is crazy. All right, so I want to switch gears because we don't have a lot of time left, and I could literally talk to you for hours, but I want to be respectful <laughs> of your time. So you are a master, man. You got 1,200 people in your downline, right? I mean, you have recruited. You are, you are attracting agents all over the country. How do you think about agent retra- attraction? How do you recruit people for your team? What has been the standout for you that's gotten you so successful? Uh, I have a five-step process for recruiting also. So uh, everything is built out into my SOPs. They're available on Goldbar. Everything I just mentioned is available on Goldbar. Essentially, what we did was we created a process based on building influence. So the very first step of recruiting comes down to your brand. Uh, if you're someone that's very famous within the industry and you DM someone, there's going to be a much higher chance that they respond to you if you just created the profile three days ago and you don't even have a photo. Mm. So building influence is key. You can build influence organically through creating content. You could pay for influence through going ahead and partnering with certain brands or actually running ads, or you could go out of your way to build it through networking, going on stage, speaking, whatever it may be. So I recommend building influence either through you being credible in the industry and actually selling or going out of your way to do podcasts like this where you can get more exposure. Once you have the brand and influence, it's about driving those, those followers and that traffic to a landing page. The landing page should go ahead and serve as a way to qualify the person, make sure they're a good fit, track who sent them to the landing page to begin with, and actually explain why they're going to be taking the meeting. During the actual landing page, now it's going to go ahead and book an appointment for you. The appointment should be fully bespoke. It should be customized and done in a way where you're not doing a cookie cutter presentation, but it's customized based on the agent's goal. Every single agent wants to get to B. If they're currently doing 10 million, they want to get to 30, 30 million a year. If they're doing 30 million, they want to get to 100 million. 100 million is B. Your job as the recruiter is to show them how you can get them from A to B either faster or easier. And if you could do those two things, they're leaving their brokerage. Once they leave their brokerage, you need to make sure that the onboarding process is crystal clear. Just because they said they wanna sign up for your brokerage, it's going to be a very emotional time in their life for them. You wanna hold their hand. Think Ritz Carlton service meets uh, onboarding concierge. Mm. Once they come on board and you make sure that you're holding the hand throughout the entire process or easing their nerves, now is management and training. You need to deliver on what you actually said. You implement uh, a training process. How do you go ahead and retain that agent? And then from there, replication, rinse and repeat, do it over again. Yeah, geez. It's, it's basically the same funnel though. If you, ca- if you pick that up, right, yeah. of like you think about guys, what he just told you to be successful in real estate, he just applied that to recruiting real estate agents. Like it, it's, it's literally the same type of idea. It's, it's identical. It's yeah. relationship-based marketing yeah, it's through the agent side. Yeah. Free, freaking gold, man. So you made this training platform. Why'd you do that and what's it all about? Basically, I went from zero to $100 million a year in sales in about five years, and I documented the entire thing and how I did it. I took my presentations, my scripts, my funnels, my campaigns, and I said, when I do training and coaching, I want to do it a little bit different. I, I don't want to do the one-on-one coaching route. For me, it's not scalable, and for the agent, it's extremely expensive for the time. So how do I decentralize the education platform by just taking a model that worked for me and giving it to everyone else? So when people join Gold Bar, I literally walk them through the entire process to build their own client acquisition system. And the other option, if they don't want to go out there and build it themselves, we could build it for them. So think of Gold Bar as kind of like training meets done for you system building. And instead of you going out of your way to say, I don't have clarity in my business, I don't know how to go out there and get clients, that's where Gold Bar comes in. We build a system for you. We walk you through the entire process of creating your assets. We tell you what software to use. We tell you how to fuel the system. And then here's the best part. At the end, we teach you how to automate the system. How do you hire staff? How much do you pay them? What script do you use to actually hire them off Indeed? Once they come on board, how do you train them? Oh, by the way, what's the SOP to manage them? We give you the entire blueprint of what I did to basically sell $100 million worth of real estate work in less than five hours a week. Dang, dude. And, and it, what, is it free? Is it a cost? What's the cost of it? $99 a month. Yeah, it's nothing. Jeez. Month to month. There's no con- I put my underwear where my mouth is. I was like, come on, try it out. You don't like it. You can leave tomorrow. Everyone that comes on board says, why are you charging so little for this? I'm trying to go Netflix with this. I'm trying to go really, really yeah, wide uh, with this. How, when did you launch it? How, how long ago? We launched in November. So six months ago, we're already at close to 650 members. Yeah, geez, wow, man. man. Good for you, dude. Good That's you. amazing. You're the real deal, Thank man. You. It's it's crazy. Like yeah. watching you over the years, guys, I'm telling you, like you came on three years ago, something like that, four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you were doing well at the time we talked to you, but nothing like today. Like you, I've been watching you over the years. You have been hustling. You have been working insanely hard. I've been seeing you and Ricky Caruth all over the place. 
Um, it's it's pretty amazing, man. Really, really big congrats. Thanks, guys. Appreciate awesome you. Stuff. Juan, I see a ton of books behind you there on the shelves. Is there any one yes. particular book that's had a big impact on your life and why? Um, I actually don't have the book up here. It's, it's kind of funny, but $100 million offers by Alex Ramosi. Oh my goodness. Great that book, book is king. so good. So I could read that book 15 times over and learn something new. Uh, the millionaire real estate agent by Gary Keller. I'm rereading it again for like the seventh time. Yeah. Um, that is kind of like the basic fundamentals of building a million dollar a year business. Um, I just think real estate is very simple. It's about taking a relationship from cold to warm to hot and knowing how to provide good service on the back end. But if you could implement technology and systems, it just makes everything way easier. As agents, we just want to go out there and, and build relationships. But if we don't have those systems on the back end, we're doing double the work. Yeah, so smart. Well said. Juan, thanks so much for coming back on the podcast. Before we close out, let, let people know how they can connect with you and get hooked up with Gold Bar. Absolutely. If anyone's interested in learning more about the Gold Bar platform, how we can build your systems, how we literally just plug and play, go to goldbartraining.com. Uh, and if you want to personally message me, you have any questions, you can just uh, look me up on Instagram at Juan, J-U-A-N, Gold Bar. Love it. Thanks again, Juan. And thank you all so much for listening. You can dive deeper to this episode, get those links that Juan mentioned over at staypaidpodcast.com, as well as the video and the show notes for this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, I want to show your support. We'd love you head on over to Apple Podcast, drop us a five-star review. We'd love to read your review here on the show. And the best way to show your support is to simply share this episode with a friend or share it on your social media. If you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can follow us on social media. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Akery. Juan, amazing, man. Definitely delivered such good stuff. So many golden nuggets. Here's my action item for everybody listening to this because you must do this. This is the fundamentals of the business. You heard Juan said you should be adding five to 10 people a day to your CRM. Five to 10 people a day. Think about how many you're adding right now. And I guarantee you, most of you are not adding five to 10 people a day. This is a relationship-based business. It's a contact sport. We all know that. So get out there and start adding people to your database and then move to the second level, which is the automation. Don't automate the relationship, but automate all the touch points. Automate all the busy work that you don't have to do and you'll succeed in this business. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single industry. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. Thank you.